I want to show you what we're doing now. Now that the insulation package has been completed, all of the air sealing is done, as you can see, we've got sheetrock. We kind of missed the window to check before the sheetrock went up, but we still want to verify that what we did got everything we were trying to get. We wanted this house to be tight. So in doing that, we now have a blower door set up here. We're going to the garage because it's a very windy day and the garage gives us a little bit of protection. The garage is open. But something I want to show you is that it's still got a pressure difference already between the outside and the inside. Now, that means that right now my pressure difference runs between 0.8 and 3.9. It depends on the wind gusts. But the first thing I've got to do is show the blower door, really, how big this house is. So what I need to do, I'm going to go ahead and go to settings here, and we're going to look at the volume. The volume I need to put in for this house is 70,600 cubic feet. So what we're doing is we're calculating edge to edge on the outside. We're taking out the garage, but we have to calculate all the footage inside this structure, counting the basement. There's a little sport court area. So we want all that volume to be included in this. What we're trying to figure out is how often we have to pay to condition the air inside this house, and then it gets sucked outside and we have to pay to condition the air again. It's called an air change. So quite simply, all of the cubic feet of air we have in this structure amounts to 70,600 cubic feet. So we're gonna go ahead and set that. And what I wanna do first is right now, I'm trying to figure out on how I want my results displayed. I can re currently I've got it set up for cubic feet a minute. That's how much air flow. I'd really like to know the air changes first. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that and I'm gonna change it to air changes per hour. Again, that tells us how many times an hour we would be replacing or paying to condition for that air again. That is, if this were actually under pressure. Now, the first thing you'll notice is I have this ring on. Everything's there inside the ring. I'm gonna to have to tell the fan how many I plan on using. I'm gonna take this whole ring off when I start the test. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the fan that has that ring off. The next thing is, just like on a scale, when you go to weigh something, you don't wanna weigh the bowl you're putting the stuff in. Well, we don't wanna weigh the pressure of the wind outside. So we're going to take an average of what's called a baseline. We're going to tear the scale just like you would do on a normal scale when you take the bowl out of the equation. Right now we're at 1.1, now 0.5. So it's going to ask for a baseline. When we go to settings, the very top one on our RetroTech gauge here is baseline. So I'm gonna press capture baseline. What this does is this runs for 30 to 60 seconds and it will average the pressure we have going outside versus the pressure we have going inside before we ever turn the fan on. So we'll go ahead and capture that baseline. We're gonna go ahead and use that. The scale is now zeroed it out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the pressure. I'm gonna start at 25 pascals, but let me show you something. Let me actually clear that. We'll go out because I typically run my blower door from my smartphone. So as you can see, these two are in sync with each other. It's already changed the ring on the fan. I'm going to use my phone now to control the fan. That way, let me make sure I remember to pull this off so that we've got the correct ring in. So now that I do this, I will go ahead and set it for 25 pascals. So now the fan is gonna go ahead and start and you'll be able to watch this goes up in air pressure till we hit 25 pascals. So I've started this at 25 pascals and what you can tell without having doors on the structure, without having anything else going on inside, the taping and mudding isn't done, there's no doors on, we've still got no plumbing fixtures in, we are already down at 1.1 air changes. The code says we can be at three air changes per hour. So we are well below the code here in Minnesota. So I'm going to let the blower door run itself. I will go ahead and go out of that app on my phone. And now what I'm gonna do is a different app and a different tool. I've got an app called FLIR One. This is a FLIR One infrared camera. This just connects to my iPhone. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hook this up. Now that the blower door has been running about 10 to 15 minutes, what I'm gonna look for is cold spots in the house. See, the infrared camera is not going to show us cold air coming in. It won't show a draft. 
What it does show is a change in the temperature of building materials. So let's say I had a leak right here along the side of this door. What that would do for me is it would show me a cold spot, say maybe right here where the lock set is. And that cold spot would tell me cold air has been coming through there. In order for this to work, I need there to be a 20 degree temperature difference between inside and outside. So we've got that. Obviously it's Minnesota, it's winter time. We should be able to have this done and really be able to tell where there's a difference. So with that, I'm going to go around the house. We'll leave the blower door running. I will turn on my infrared camera and we're gonna go see what kind of job we did. So we've been around the house and what we're looking at now is we actually have where the two slabs meet, meaning the slab and the foundation are meeting or the footings. So what I've got here, when we look at this camera and we see the windows, obviously the windows don't have a whole lot of R value, but if you can see this, I can see my reflection in the window. There's that much heat coming off of me. So what we're talking about here is a very small difference in temperature. So as we look down at the floor, we can see where those two slabs connect. That tells us our camera's working beautifully. Well, as we go through the rest of the wall, you will notice that we really don't have anywhere that we are losing energy except a little bit in the corner, and this is barely any at all. Now let me show you where we don't have the front door installed yet, and you'll see a big difference. Largely on this house, one of the problems is using this as a training tool, we didn't miss much. So the job is actually a fantastic job. Once we finish out the rest of everything, as I said, we're gonna be under one air change more than likely. So let's take a look at the front door. So as I said before, I'd show you an area where we do have an issue still because we've got a temporary door. As you can see here on the outlet, which normally your outlet would be glowing black, this is barely red at all because what we've got in there are the copper wires. They're still at the same temperature of what was in the house earlier before we warmed it up. This door was open. What we've got here on the door, what you'll notice is we've got a black line there. That is actually from right here. If you look at my hand inside the shot, you'll be able to see right where my hand was. Now we've got a little bit of a brighter line there. But what's happening is we've got cold air pouring in through that seam. And that's really where a lot of the air is coming from. We've got two fireplaces and we've got this door and some other trim that needs to go on. So again, normally an outlet is going to be really black or in the summertime in the South, it would be very bright, but it would be a different temperature. In this case, our outlets, even if I pan down to the one by the floor, you'll notice it doesn't have a big temperature change. The only temperature change you see right now is the wet drywall mud because water is going to be cold. In this case, we're not seeing that when we put it up here where we actually have cold air coming in. So now you've seen what happened with what we've done with the house so far. Our builder's done a great job of putting up the framing and getting all that done. Our insulation team's done a great job of air sealing, getting the house where everything was buttoned up. Now we've got the drywall going in and I'm in front of our last big hole, I'll call it. We have our temporary door going to the outside. Next time we talk about this house, we're gonna look at the final results. We're going to look at some of the comfort things that were built into the home, we're going to notice that we'll have a real front door and we're gonna look at the actual air changes and the results of what we've been able to do. The great part of this, as with any nice build or any high performance build, is we've done so many things ahead of time, at this point we can't help but have great results. If you've got more questions about high performance homes, insulation, air sealing, products that we have to offer or just general questions on design and things like that, give us a call, reach out to us. I'm Ken Allison with IDI. We're here to earn your business every day.